how long were you in custody before you decided to transition your life from where it was to saying, look, I've seen what that life has gotten me. The cost is way too high. But now I know I have to make a transition and turn my life around. Did it take you years to come to that point or was that right away for you? Um, it definitely, um, to be honest with you, it was right away, man. When I got sentenced, I had to sit across from my victim's family and I had to sit across and listen to my family. I had to listen to my grandma, my moms, my, my step pop, my pops, my sisters and brothers. I had to listen to them beg a judge that, you know, Ed's a good person. Ed, you know, he's worth saving. And, 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 and I had to also listen to my victim's family, his mom, his aunt, his sisters and brothers, to say, you know, what a monster I was for taking away their loved one. And that, that, that made me right there say, you know what, man? I'm going to change my life. I'm changing my life. And not only am I going to change my life, because I've learned um, that a true apology, a power, when people apologize, then they go back and do the same thing over again. That's not an apology. That's manipulation. So when you apologize for something and you change your life and you stop doing the things that you're apologizing for, then that's a true apology. So to start out, I wanted to give a true apology. I wanted to apologize and not only show that out of my mouth, but show that in my actions. I ask you this because you're entering the system, you're a young man, you're looking at real time, but you committed the ultimate crime. You showed, I bust my gun. Going into the prison system, that ain't a bad thing. I hate to say it like that, but you go in with a certain status. So for you, that, mind shift, that mindset shift started right away because right you could have easily chose the other way, which is embrace yeah. the fact that people look at you as you a dude who get busy. Yes. So yeah, I went right in and dispelled that right away. Um, guys were asking me all those type of questions. Guys, like you said, that have bust guns and guys that was maybe um, thinking about busting guns when they get out. And the thing about it was, was I was letting them know like, man, that lifestyle, man, do you have a heart? Do you have a conscience? Can you just really, can you really just shoot somebody and go to sleep, eat a sandwich and go to sleep? You know, I mean, you know, come on, man, we got to be real. You know, some people have been so damaged that maybe they can, but I wasn't one of those guys. I was one of the guys that say, hey, man, we can rise above that damage. You know, we've all faced some things that, you know, we would like to change. We would like to do over, but let's just make this change right now, man, to see where it goes. You know, give it a shot, try it, and let's see what happens. And that was my, that was my advocacy from day one. Um, let's, I'm gonna try some new things. I'm gonna try some right things, and I'm gonna see what it's gonna get me. And I've seen some, some successes right in prison from adopting the things that my granddad tried to tell me that I didn't use anymore. I started to use these things right there, and I've seen some childs, ooh, these, it works. I'm seeing it work, man, come on, try it. So it was that type of mentality. Before we go into some of the things that you put into practice that your grandfather told you, did you, did you ever have a chance to reach out? I know you're in court, the victim side, they just want blood, they want vengeance. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have a chance to apologize to them personally? And I asked you this earlier, was the victim somebody who you knew from the neighborhood? Okay, um, I didn't know him personally, but you know how we roll with different crews and different cliques and different circles of people. So I knew a lot of people in his circle really well. I knew their reputation. I, 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 I've been around them, you know, we lived in the same neighborhood, a block or two over. So we didn't hang out, but they hung out with a certain crew of guys. I hung out with a certain crew of guys. Those crews didn't get along a lot of times. Sometimes they did, but you know, it was how the dynamic of the community and the urban community is. You know, you you could be in a community with somebody your whole life. 
And y'all used to spend the night over each other's house. But now at the age of 19 and 20 and 21, he hang with that crew and you hang with this crew and y'all just do not feel each other like that anymore. I ask you this because you could at least put a face to the victim. Yes. This wasn't somebody who, who you know, he's just mystery man X. Right. You could put right. a face to him. No doubt. I knew his name. I knew, you know, the reputation. I knew the people. I, I, I definitely knew him, you know, even from some younger people that hung out around the people that I hung out with. You know, we've had conversations about that crew. Uh, a number of times, and I'm sure it was the same way with, you know, those guys over there, or what kind of car you drive, or what young lady you might know, and all those type of things. I, they're connectors. Did, have you ever had a chance to apologize to his family? Um, in court, you are, um, uh, uh, you are um, should I say, authorized or instructed. Um, you have this opportunity right now to apologize, but you better not um, be talking to the victim's family or else they'll put some more time on your sentence. So it's, if the victim reaches out to you, then you're open to saying something. But if you send that letter to that victim's house and they take it to the authorities, you can get some more time. You get in big trouble for that. So that's a touchy situation. You can't really do that. Got you. So now you're in prison. You're doing your time. You say right away, I'm implementing things that my grandfather drilled into my head that I didn't put into practice on the street. What are some of those things? Because I want you to help somebody who's going through this at this moment. What are some little things, just some things you can do on a daily basis that might not seem like much, but they mean a lot because they start to transition your life from a life of hard-headedness, crime, not listening to authority, to now going in the right direction. And even if it's small baby steps, at least you're heading down the path of a right direction. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the major things that my granddad always done, and this is the one thing that started me, and I'm gonna say, it wasn't nothing that he said, it was how he brought life to me. And he brought life to me with full accountability. Um, he was able to have accountability in his life and be able to give you your life and say you are accountable for your life and not have the peer pressure and not have the ills of your friends, everybody pulling you in 90 different directions because if you hold yourself accountable and you hold the people around you accountable, you'll come out better. Whereas with the hood mentality, the hood mentality is this your friend, this your family, you be there for them no matter what. And my granddad never taught me that. My granddad said every person is accountable. He taught me that, hey, you stand on your own too. That's what a man does. So when I got to prison, I didn't blame my uncle. I didn't blame the hood. I didn't blame my mom. I didn't blame my grandparents. I said, I am the reason why I'm here. I'm the reason. And I seen better, um, should I say, decisions from myself immediately from saying, I'm going to be the reason why I make it. And I'm going to be the reason why I don't make it. I'm not blaming anybody. And at one point, I did let something come out of my mouth when I said, you know what? I was mad at my uncle for like five minutes. Me and my mom was talking on the visit. And my mom, just like my granddaddy, said, you know what? Shut up and do your time. Shut your mouth and do your time. And once again, it snapped me right back. Accountability, accountability. If you was man enough, when your uncle came in that house with blood in his mouth, if you was man enough to say, uh, you, you, you gotta handle your business. Either stay out that, that circle or handle your business. I'm not getting in it. That's what a man does. But at this time, I wasn't a man. I, I hadn't fully grasped my manhood yet. So with that accountability factor, I start holding myself accountable for everything in my life, and, and I got better. I got better instantly. The next day, I can feel the accountability. I can feel that, and it, it, got, me, it got me along a lot further along that road of change than, than not holding myself accountable would ever have done. I love that. I love that, because that's really what it's about, is accountability and holding yourself accountable for all of your actions. 
You can't be yeah. accountable for what somebody else does, but we are 100% in control of what we do. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.